All things in this world are made of atoms, and therefore electrons and protons. Well, these styrofoam pieces love electrons. They love them. So as they rub against one another and other things, they will try to pull electrons to themselves. And when they do this, they become largely negative or negatively charged. Now, human skin and hair, on the other hand, does not like electrons. If it has a chance, it'll give those electrons away. And when it gives these electrons away, the skin and the hair become largely positive or positively charged. Well, that's what static cling is. Static cling is when these negatively charged styrofoam pieces attract to my positively charged hand. And that is what we have. Opposites attract. This is one of the coolest devices in our study of electricity and magnetism. It's called a Van de Graaff generator. Now, the whole purpose of a Van de Graaff generator is to create large amounts of static electricity, or it's also referred to as an electrostatic generator. Now let me show you how it works a little bit here. Okay, Inside the top, inside the blue box is a motor and the motor connects and drives this giant rubber band conveyor belt if you will. Okay, And hopefully you can see a piece of wire mesh right here. Now down in the bottom what happens is a, a function of grounding goes on that enables the rubber band to be charged. Now the charging then has an effect on the metal dome. Now the metal dome of course is a conductor where the rubber band is an insulator. And so there's an attraction of charge from the dome onto the rubber band. And that leaves the dome charged. Now this process can create a lot of electrical charge and the discharges because the because the charging of the dome because the charging of that dome right there produces a, a large body of one type of charge it tends to break down the air and that process is called ionization and the process of ionization can lead to some pretty significant little lightning bolts and that's where it gets exciting okay Put your arm out here and it'll pop to you. Okay, there we go. Okay, and it'll keep popping to you. And, and you can see, you can get a whole bunch of lightning bolts that come off and it feels real prickly. It doesn't so much hurt as it, as it is more surprising. We're not used to, to, to being shocked. And if you don't like being shocked, then of course, this might not be the best device for you. Okay, but we're gonna talk more about this device a little bit later. Try and get a good lightning bolt for you. Okay, we just have some little ones here. Okay, there we go. There we go. You can see the, can see the purple happening right in here. Now the beauty is your muscles are electrical. And so by shocking them you can see my wrist flopping and that's because of the, that's because of the electrical shocks going on here. But you've got some really cool, oh this is just fun. Okay, so lots can be Lots can be done with an electrostatic generator. It's by a process of grounding that enables it to become electrically charged. Now, we can also, when, and this is what is done so that you can set your experiment up without getting the daylight shocked out of you, turn this on and hold another conductor right here or up to it. Now, because this metal is a conductor and it's tied to a piece of conducting wire, this is going all the way into the ground and so it's just producing a circle and so there's not a lot of resistance happening and you can see that the belt is responding in that way it's responding very very quickly okay it's um, really speeding up now this right here this generator can be used in so many different ways first of all it demonstrates the use of both an insulator in the rubber band and a conductor on the metal shell now the distribution of charge up on the top, these charges, because they're all the same, will get to spread out all over and evenly all over the dome. So you get a nice charge distribution on top. 
It's not everybody's coming onto the dome and hanging out right here. Because it's a conductor, this material allows the charge to move around the, um, the entire shell. It also works by the process of grounding and can, and can be controlled by the process of grounding. Now one of the bestest ways to show this process of charging because you can see me get shocked and you can hear it operating but you can't feel it, it causing the hair on your arms to move. So a fun little demonstration is to, is to take a cup, a styrofoam cup which is an insulator and fill it with some puffed rice type cereal. Okay, so this is just a, a little bit of puffed rice type cereal, and, and that's all, all right? It's real light and real fluffy. Now, what I'm going to do is put it in the cup, and I have a little bit of tape on the cup to, to uh, tape the cup to the, the ceiling or the top of our Van de Graaff generator, okay? Now, some cool stuff starts to happen, okay? I want you to watch the cup, okay? Watch the cup. Watch what happens at the cup. Okay, give it just a moment. Yeah! Did you see that? All the puffed rice goes flying out of there. Okay, and there's a little bit more in there. You might see one or two come out of there. But this right here, this electrostatic generator, causes a charge distribution that causes the pieces of rice to fly right out of there. Why? Because these rices, these pieces of rice, have electric charge on them as well. And because of the charging process, these, these rice get charged. Here's a piece that's charged. Here's a piece that's charged. And because they're light enough and the electrostatic forces between them is great enough, they literally repel each other away. And so we see this process. That's the best way I can visualize the fact that like charges repel one another. Okay, the charging process causes this puffed rice to get charged and the electrostatic forces between likes causes a huge repulsion and hence you get a little cereal fountain. So the concept of grounding is yet another way to demonstrate the properties and behaviors of electric charge.